absolute chaos the past 24 hours. Uh, had to hop on here and give my uh, two cents and some information. Uh, obviously got to change up some picks here. So uh, I guess the, the chaos started with Thursday night press conference. Uh, that didn't happen. You had the backstage brawl between Hamzat Chimaev, uh, Kevin Holland, and Nate Diaz, and every one of Nate Diaz's 40 people on his team. So that gets canceled. And then uh, this morning, weigh-ins start, and uh, neither Nate Diaz or Chimaev are first in line. Usually the main event will be first in line and uh, ready to go, wanting to get rehydrated and everything, and neither of them are there. Then we get word that Chimaev uh, is having some problems with the weight cut, and it's not looking good. And then they ultimately tell him that he should stop cutting weight because his body is cramping up and uh, the doctor did not allow him to continue. So he weighs in at 178 and a half, I believe it was. So seven and a half pounds over. Uh, you get the, the one pound uh, leeway between the, the 170 welterweight fight. So seven and a half pounds over and everyone's freaking out and wondering if this is even going to happen, if there's going to be fights tomorrow, if they're uh, going to get to have an event, having a main event or whatever. Uh, a lot of rumors flying around, whether it's Diaz versus Ferguson. And, you know, you had the, the three last fights of the night were all supposed to be, uh, well, 180 for the, the Holland and D-Rod fight and then 170 and 170. So that kind of worked out kind of odd. Could be a little fishy um, because this card wasn't very, very strong. Maybe all this drama was planned. Hmm, maybe. Could be. I wouldn't. Uh, it'd be very hard to pull off, I guess, but I wouldn't doubt it, maybe. Uh, but it definitely made it more exciting. And uh, that's why I'm making this video. So ultimately, we do get the announcement from Dana White. And it's uh, Nate Diaz, Tony Ferguson in the in uh, the main event for five rounds. Co-main event, Hamzat Chemaev and Kevin Holland for five rounds. And then poor Lee Jingliang gets screwed once again. Uh, he's going to have to fight D-Rod. D-Rod weighed in at 179.5, I believe, because uh, their fight was going to be at 180. And Lee Jingliang, I think, 171 or one. He weighed in uh, at the correct weight, so D-Rod's going to have about nine pounds on him. Um, I guess, like, after weigh-ins, about nine pounds. Who knows what he'll be at tomorrow. Uh, so, Li Xing Liang taking one for the team again. Uh, he had the, the suit, the beautiful suit, tailored suit that he was going to wear to the press conference, and he, he's been practicing his English, and it gets canceled. Feel bad for the guy, man. He's he's been around for a while. Uh, he's been a you know kind of average, middling, uh, or middle of the pack welterweight, and this was going to be his co-main event slot against Tony Ferguson, very household name. Gave him a chance to uh, put his name out there and get some more traction. And dude's just it's all downhill. So uh, hopefully he, I mean, it'd be. <laughs> Really bad if he lost tomorrow, and then everything pretty much went wrong. But we're going to go over the odds real quick, and I'll make my picks. I don't want to make this too long because I want to get it uploaded probably uh, by Friday night, if not Saturday morning. Uh, but the odds on FanDuel for the Rodriguez-Jingliang fight, Rodriguez is minus 150, Jingliang plus 122. Um, Honestly, like, Ugh, it's going to be that that weight difference. I'm honestly surprised they let it happen. Um, and I'm huge shout out to Lee Jingliang for taking this and saving uh, you know, a big part of the main car because the other two fights are not that great. Um, so the big weight difference is like, it's going to be hard to overcome. Um, also, D-Rod's never been finished. Dude's got a good chin, Mexican chin. Jing Liang, uh, more of a stand and, and striker. He's got, I believe, 10 knockouts um, on his record. So it's probably going to be a stand-up affair. And in my opinion, 
Rodriguez probably gonna have the more more volume. Xing Liang, maybe the more powerful shots. Um, but it's gonna it's probably gonna come down to a decision, and I would say D Rod takes the decision based off volume, and he's got some some good power as well. Uh, but just in a boxing match, I think D Rod beats him. Uh, Xing Liang solid as well. On the feet, I'm gonna go with D Rod uh, at minus 150. That's honestly not a terrible price, but Jingling as a dog, man, he comes through. Uh, Jingling as a favorite, not so much. I could see this playing out, playing out a lot like uh, his fight with Neil Magny. So that's why I'm kind of going with D Rod. Um, I'm also interested interested to see how these lines move because they literally just got brought out like less than an hour ago. So. Uh, we'll keep it moving though. D Rod, take a D Rod there. Kevin Holland, Hamza Chemaev, Holland sitting at plus three fifty. Hamza at minus five twenty. Um, I know everyone's probably going to be cheering for Kevin Holland tomorrow. He's usually, I mean, he's a, a fan favorite. Uh, props to him for taking this one as well. Um, I mean, it's kind of like a a win win for him. He doesn't really lose much here. He's he's going to be fighting the number three ranked contender in the welterweight division. So, I, I well, I guess it would be at a catch weight. So, would it, it didn't wouldn't really matter for the weight class, if I'm correct on that. So, but I mean, if you beat Hans out, like you're going to get some really good fights after that. So, this one's also five rounds uh, in the co-main event. So Holland, you know. His fight didn't get booked until not too, uh, like not too long ago. Like I want to say four weeks, three or four weeks. Um, so to go five rounds, that's kind of asking a lot. Hamzat obviously having problems with his body. Um, interested to see how he looks tomorrow. He didn't look sunken in at the weigh-ins. That's what everybody was like. He doesn't even look that bad. He's you know, smiling and flipping off the camera. Uh, surely he could cut some more weight, but uh, the doctors told him he couldn't, so not much he can do there. Uh, does Hamzat recover f- by tomorrow to be at his normal um, readiness to fight? Who the hell knows? Uh, <laughs> at this point, it's like... Everything on this this card is who knows. Like just so much chaos. Who the hell knows what's gonna happen? Um I'm gonna take Hams out for the sake of the channel. Uh just if he can wrestle Holland. Uh, Holland has obviously shown he has trouble with wrestling. Um and even you know, if this was a a planned five round fight. Maybe I could see Holland coming on late um, if he can get past the takedowns in the first and second round. Uh, but just because he hasn't been uh, preparing for a five-round fight, I I wouldn't really trust him to be strong in the fourth and fifth round. So I'm going to take Jemayev. Um I'll probably keep an eye on like, some props for that one. Uh, none of the props are really out yet right now, I don't believe. Just take a look. Yeah, I know there's no prop up, props out right now. So, literally an hour hour after. So, give me Chimaya for the sake of the channel. Uh, moving on to the main event: Nate Diaz, Tony Ferguson. Nate Diaz sitting at plus one twenty, the dog, and Ferguson minus one fifty four. This is kind of like the same thing. Um, like Tony Ferguson's fight didn't get booked until like not too long ago. Nate Diaz, I mean, this whole card really hasn't been booked for that long, but Nate Diaz is much longer than the Ferguson one. Ferguson one. Five rounds. Ferguson was preparing for three rounds. Uh, Nate always going to be strong for five. Um, damn, I already see money coming back in on on Nate here, or coming in for Nate. The line just moved to plus 108. Um, I know... Yeah, that's tough. Um, the book I use is doesn't have their odds out yet, so that's why I'm using FanDuel. Um, so I want to take Nate. I want to take Nate at dog money. I think he definitely wins the fourth and fifth. Um, 
probably the third. I could see Tony taking the first, and then after that, I could see Nate uh, kind of getting used to to fighting Tony because um, he's obviously preparing for Chimaev. He's probably doing a lot of takedown defense and stuff like that. Who knows? I mean, who the hell knows what, what Nate does, Diaz is doing for preparation. But Nate, in probably his last f- fight in the UFC, I would love to take him at uh, this slight plus money. Uh, over a guy who hasn't won a fight in a while. He's taken a lot of damage and was preparing for a three-round fight. So I wanted to take Nate Diaz. I'm going to take Nate Diaz for the sake of the channel. And hopefully I can get in on him uh, in my book before it gets uh, moved more in his favor. So everything works out for Nate Diaz. He doesn't have to fight the uh, the killer, Hamza Chemaev. He gets uh, a, a fight against an older guy like himself. I think this worked out pretty well. Um, honestly, this is a better main card than what it was originally intended for. I think the only person getting fucked here is Lee Jingliang. <laughs> He's getting so fucked. Like it's supposed to be the co-main event uh, against a very household name. He gets moved to the third fight on the main card um, against a bigger guy, against a guy who has less of a name, unranked, didn't get to, like, do anything for the press conference. This guy's getting fucked, and he's still like, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll fight him. I wonder how much they paid him. They had to have just given him an enormous bag because he's been getting fucked all week, and he's going to get royally fucked here. Um, Yeah. It'd be great to see Jing Liang by knockout. I bet that prop is probably going to be pretty juicy because Rodriguez hasn't been finished. And, I mean, it's pretty likely he could, could knock him out there. So uh, so we went about 12 minutes here. But I just want to make this quick. I want to get those picks out there. I'm going to go through the full card here just to um, make it official. So Nate Diaz, Hamza Chimaev. Um, Daniel Rodriguez, Irene Aldana, Johnny Walker, Hakeem Dewadu, who also missed weight, but whatever. Uh, Jilton Almeida, Dennis Tolulin, Jake Collier, Chris Barnett didn't make weight as a heavyweight, weighing 267 and a half. Like, Jesus, dude, you're 5'9, you can be under 265. Uh, whatever. Collier, uh, Norma Dumont, both of those ladies almost missed weight. A lot of weight issues today. Alatang Haley. Melissa Martinez, and I have Johan Linus right now. I'm really, I really want to take Darian Weeks because I feel like he's just, he's pretty durable and he's going to have the better cardio. <sighs> no. I'm going to stay with Lioness. I'll stay with Lioness because last time I changed because. Last time I, I changed my picks and uh, it ended up being wrong, I went back and looked and it's like, what does this guy do well? Nothing that well. He does everything okay. Um, and what what does Lioness do? He's got good hands and pretty solid grappling. Um, so it's just his cardio. And uh, Gabe Green is, is like a cardio machine, so you, it's hard to fault him for that. But I'll... Keep my pick with Johan Lioness. Um, Very excited for this one. All the hype around it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Uh, Can't wait for tomorrow. I think this is a much better value for the pay-per-view buy. Hey, Jive Picks here. Uh, Reporting on the chaos. Hope everyone enjoys. And uh, let's have a great night of fights. Till next time. With the recap, Hey, Jive Picks signing off.